Hello everyone and welcome for this new episode of Art Thoughts. In this episode I'm going to talk about the difficult art of comparing your work to the work of other artists and how you can stop comparing yourself if it's becoming destructive for you. Comparing your art to other artists is inevitable unless you live in a bubble with no contact with the outside world. But um, in a way, it's impossible to create art out of context. So you will have to compare your uh, work with other artists. But the problem is that it can be both very constructive or very destructive. And it depends on how you do it and also depends on how advanced you are in your evolution as an artist. So the idea of evolution is is central here. So let's talk about constructive comparison. This is the first one that you do in your evolution as an artist. As a student, all you do is constructive comparison. You're comparing yourself because it's necessary to learn and get better. You compare yourself to your model, you compare yourself to your instructor's uh, suggestions or to other artists that you see as inspiration or even other students if you do some competition. And it's a necessary step in your evolution as a figurative artist because you're looking for standards and you try to perfect your skills. At this stage, you really need to be honest with yourself and you shouldn't let go until your work is equal or at least close to the standards you chose to give yourself. And during this very early phase of your evolution, comparing your work is essential and necessary as it is required to give yourself goals and improve your skills and knowledge. And creativity is only possible if you first have material to create from. And creativity can't create art out of thin air. It needs to have building material and comparing yourself as a beginner helps you gather all that building material for later. As a method, comparison can also be very helpful. For instance, if you do master copy or if you learn with any technique that requires great accuracy. If you want to do portraits, you'll always compare your work to your model and you'll develop a sort of natural tendency to always compare your work and and it means compare it to the model but also to others. Now there is another phase in your evolution and this is when things start to become a little bit more tricky. It's a, a phase of your evolution as an artist where you have all the technical knowledge that you need And your goal is now to find your own voice and experiment to find the style that defines you. It's an in-between stage. You're not a student anymore, but you're not an accomplished artist yet. You are skilled, but not mature. At this stage, comparing yourself is still useful. It's not necessary anymore as it was before. At this point, you want to compare your work to others, not to copy or imitate as you did before, but you want to define your unique style. So you want to compare yourself to understand what makes you different. So let's say you compare yourself to artists who influence you, not copying them, but sort of seeing in them what resonates with you. Or you want to compare yourself to artists who do similar or related art. And you want to compare to know what makes you different. But this is also the point when it can start becoming destructive. Comparing yourself to others can become a destructive habit. And here's why. 
First, there is a risk of alienating your vision. If you compare yourself too much, it can sort of permeate your art. And your art needs to be about you, not about what other people do. And the second risk, which I think is the greatest, is the risk of discouragement. No matter how good you are, you can always find someone who draws better than you, who paints better than you, who has more success than you, who is more famous, more recognized. Given the fact that you are still emerging, so you don't have a strong identity yet, and maybe if you lack confidence, comparing yourself might become destructive because it might make you feel like you'll never be as good as all these other great artists. They can be artists from contemporary artists or artists from the past. This really depends on your personality, on how competitive you are or how much self-confidence you naturally have. Some people, for instance, are just inspired and they feel very good about other artists being better than them and they find it naturally uh, inspiring. So that's perfect. Keep this mindset. But for some others, it can be counterproductive because it might make them feel less about themselves. And if it is your case, you need to avoid this negative side effect of comparing yourself to other artists. So how can you avoid destructive comparison? I think there are two things to keep in mind. The first is to always compare yourself to your past self and not to others today. So all these fantastic artists have way more success than you and paint a lot better than you. So what? You don't know anything about their journey and the trouble they had to go through to get there. At some point, they were beginners. At some point, they were where you are. So you can't let their present success discourage your yourself right now for the future. Think about your achievements since you've started and visualize the rest of your journey, your own journey. Think about where you are now and compare yourself to who you were before and not to who others are right now. And the second thing to keep in mind, which I, I think is even more important, is to cultivate your uniqueness. Every time you see an amazing artist doing amazing work, don't think about how superior he or she is to you, but instead look for unique things your art provides that this artist's work doesn't have. Well, it doesn't matter how famous or how successful or, or how great this other artists are. You might have something very different and very unique that they never thought about. So think about this every time you compare yourself to other artists. Think about what makes you unique. And not only will this help you feel more confident about yourself, but it will also slowly help you build your ar artistic personality. The more you'll see other artists doing great things, the more you'll have confirmation that you are on the right track for your art. And, and you'll have confirmation if you see in your art something that's not present in other artists. So even though they have better skills than you, they have achieved greater things, you might have something unique that they never thought about. And this is what you need to cultivate. You need to cultivate your uniqueness and not the similarity. You don't need to be a follower. You want to be creating something that's never been thought before. And the more you'll compare yourself this way, the more you'll understand what makes your art unique. And this turns destructive comparison into constructive comparison. Ultimately, 
I think that every artist has a unique story to tell and that no one can tell your story but you. All right, that's it for this episode of Art Thoughts. Don't hesitate to leave your comments in the section below. And I'll see you for the next episode. Until then, have fun painting, have fun drawing. Bye.